Hello and welcome to a very special video. I'm Ankit Vengurlekar and here at Tech2, just like everyone else, we absolutely love smartphones. They are remarkable in everything that they do and we love it that brand new Chinese phone makers are getting us such incredible hardware at such unbelievable prices. But while we love technology and smartphones, what we don't love at all is being lied to. And unfortunately, that's exactly what is happening. Well, my colleague Anirudh here is the man of the hour really because he's carried out a series of tests on 10 handsets from 7 phone makers all because it started off with one claim of one company that okay, yes, we are lying about our benchmarks. Who am I talking about? Huawei, of course, who yeah. came out in the open and admitted to 3D Mark, which is a benchmarking platform, that yes, we lie with our benchmarks. Well, because everybody lies with benchmarks. Uh, whatever that schoolboy, schoolgirl logic is, uh, is beyond us. But that actually got Anirudh to investigate most of the popular phones these days. Uh, so, Anirudh, enough of my introduction. Why don't you tell us what are the 10 handsets that you tested? Uh, and the entire process that you went through with the benchmark testing. So the basic uh, premise, at least from the research that we did, is that Oppo and Huawei for sure, we don't know if any other brands are doing this, are targeting benchmarking apps by name. So they don't care what the app is actually doing. It doesn't matter if it is a stressful uh, program or not. So if the app is called Antutu and it does nothing else but show like text on the screen, they are just boosting the phone performance to like another level. And that performance level is not available to the user. And in our testing, we found that it's actually boosting it to a very dangerous level for the phone as well as the user. Okay. So what we, to test this hypothesis, we spoke to UL Benchmarks. These are the guys who make the 3D Mark benchmarking program, which is what's something we use in all our testing. Correct. So we spoke to them, they gave us a private version of the app. So this is basically 3D Mark, except that it's not called 3D Mark. Absolutely. And it's literally as plain and dumb as that. Yeah, any it. app that's called 3D Mark or Antutu or any other benchmarking yeah. app, literally it's targeted and performance is boosted, yes. uh, assuming that this is actually a benchmark app. Yeah. Okay. So Huawei and Oppo have both claimed that it's AI at work and they're looking at workloads and all that, but obviously it's not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was about a few months ago that we found that Oppo was doing this. Correct. And we, at that time, also tested this ourselves by making a fake app. And we ran a report on yeah. Tech2 on that. Yeah. Oppo, we knew was cheating. We knew Huawei admitted to cheating. And UL Benchmarks told us that they delisted Huawei on Honor phones. Okay. So we thought Huawei, Oppo also makes Realme, so that has to be in the test. Okay. So we picked up uh, the Huawei P20 Pro, the Honor 10, Realme 1, Realme 2, uh, the Oppo Find X, which is the latest phone, mm -hmm. the Nokia 7 Plus, mm -hmm. Xiaomi's Redmi Note 5 Pro, the Pocophone F1 and the OnePlus 6 and the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Okay. The other phones were, of course, for good measure to actually see yeah. uh, if these phone companies are actually uh, lying to us, cheating about benchmarks or not. Yeah. Okay. And so we'll get in depth, but give us the executive summary of what your close to 300 benchmark tests on these devices. Uh, what is the conclusion that uh, you're left with? Basically that Oppo, uh, it's a brand Realme, Huawei, it's a brand uh, Honor. They are all cheating on benchmarks and they are literally doubling the scores for many of the tests and they're pushing the phones well beyond their safe limits. Okay. And so in a, in a real world scenario, Anurudh, help us understand, does it really matter to a normal consumer that, okay, benchmark scores are being cheated upon? More often than not, tech sites like Tech2 and every other YouTuber, tech blogger out there worth their salt, uh, they like to exhibit these benchmark numbers or figures as really a measure of performance of these smartphones and the chipset that powers these smartphones. Yeah. And a lot of times these phone companies use that benchmark figure almost like a trophy, a medal, an achievement of sorts. Yeah. And companies like Oppo, actually use these figures in their advertisements to tell their customers or prospective buyers that hey you should buy our phone because we score highest on this particular benchmark vis-a-vis -vis competition yeah. but in the real world does it really matter to the consumer and what is the benchmark an indicator of i think the mistake people make is they assume that benchmark like if you get like a high score in a benchmark that phone is better than something else uh, there are too many factors that come into play and in real world usage you cannot account for those factors so what a benchmark does is it gives you a measure of relative performance. So if a phone scores 4,000 in one benchmark and 6,000 in another, so the parameters tested in that benchmark, you know that this other phone is like 50% faster than okay. that. 
that is the idea of a benchmark okay so like say you have a google pixel 2 mm -hmm. and a samsung galaxy note mm -hmm. 4000 mah battery 3000 mah battery is a big difference mm -hmm. how do you tell like which is a better phone like if you ask me what's a good gaming phone i can't tell you just by looking at the specs this is better so these benchmarks aid in decision making yeah. so like i look at the note 9 i know it's getting 11 fps and this is getting 19 i know the pixel is better okay that's how i can explain it to you okay all right so now run us through the test that you carried out um the 3d mark app or yeah. a twin 3D Mark app, which was not called 3D Mark. We basically reset all phones to factory defaults, okay. wiped the phone, eliminated all data, installed all updates, and okay. then froze updates from that point onwards. Okay. Okay. And then we split the test into two parts. Okay. One is to measure the performance of the phone, and one to measure how much it's heating up. Okay. Because the idea is that under load, the performance drops. Every phone does that. Okay. So help us understand firstly, what does a 3D Mark measure okay. in a phone? What is it an indicator of? So 3D Mark is a benchmarking suite that consists of many apps. Okay. We pick the two gaming benchmarks. Okay. One is a medium low heavy load and one is a heavy load. Okay. So this is for high-end phones, low-end phones to spread that up. Okay. And so from the 3D Mark score, one can derive the conclusion that this particular phone, its chipset and GPU are better suited for graphic intensive applications yes. and games or not. Yeah. Okay, so a high 3D Mark score would mean that this is better suited for gaming and other high intensive graphic applications. Yeah. Okay. And right. it's a linear score. So if one is 300, one is 600, 600 is dubbed twice as good. That's okay. the idea. Yeah. All right, okay. So who are the top offenders or the biggest cheaters in your list of 10 phones from seven brands? In the list of phones, we have the Oppo Find X, Realme 1, Realme 2, Honor 10 and P20 Pro. All of them were cheating. And at to varying degrees, but to a very large extent. Okay. So just to give you some examples, uh, so I have the data here. The Huawei P20 Pro, which was I think the flagship phone last year. Of course. Yeah, running the Kirin 970. And we love that camera implementation, exactly. yes. So that scored like 2050 in one of the benchmarks. Okay. While not cheating okay. in the twin app. And it scored about 3,263 on average. So that's 1,200 points yeah. more than what the actual benchmark score yeah. is. That's about 60% over baseline. And so 60% of score above the baseline, to be able to do this, it must be running the phone chipset at a remarkably high temperature. It yeah. must be stressing out the entire system to the point of almost melting the phone. Yeah. What are the temperatures we are looking at that the Huawei P20 Pro climbed up to? So this is the interesting part. Like the P20 Pro didn't actually get that hot. Like it hit 60 degrees, but even the- 60 degrees? Yeah. But even the Poco F1 hit 60 degrees and that wasn't cheating. Okay. But okay. the dangerous part here is that the battery was also hitting 50 degrees. Oh my God. Yeah. And that is an unsafe limit because uh, the safe limit is supposed to be around 45 degrees. For the battery temperature. The battery, yeah. Okay. And we all know if the battery heats up too much, <laughs> Samsung Galaxy Note 7 happens. And the Honor 10 was even worse, where it hit 60 degrees on the battery and the phone was so hot that we couldn't hold it in our hands. 60 degrees on the battery? Yes. So the body temperature may very well be hovering around 70 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, we couldn't actually accurately measure it because... Because you couldn't hold it? Yeah. My goodness. And even worse than this was the Oppo Find X, which hit 76 degrees on the CPU. So it's like, we can't, I can't even imagine any CPU, like even a desktop CPU running at that temperature without me getting worried about something. How like is that. everything not getting fried inside? It would ideally. It would. So our test ran for like about an hour continuously in a continuous loop to measure the degrading in performance. Oppo, Honor, Realme, none of these guys toned down the performance even in the slightest. The Honor 10 was the only one which said like, hold on, the phone is getting hot and the benchmark crashed. Okay. But none of the other phones. Gave out that error. So this could actually put the user at risk yes. if anybody buys any of these phones and just for curiosity or to show off to their friends, they run the 3D Mark app. Yeah. These are the kind of temperatures yeah. it could actually go up to. And these are happening in the first run, which is like five minutes into the benchmark. My God. So it's not like we're running it over a long period and it's happening. Hit run and that's the temperature. All this <coughs> just so that these phone companies can get a higher benchmark score number yes. that they can advertise and lure customers into buying their phone. Yep. Okay, you also spoke about how you have OnePlus, uh, Xiaomi's Redmi Note 5 Pro, Poco Phone F1 and the Nokia 7 Plus. Yep. Talk to us about the benchmarking results of these four phones so, and the Note 9 or Note 8, one yep. of these. 
So these phones just give us the expected results, which is they gave a high score in the beginning and then in subsequent runs the, temp the scores fell. This is how a phone is normally expected to run. It cannot sustain a load for more than... It's called thermal throttling yeah. and it's perfectly normal and advisable yeah. to do this for the safety and health of your phone and the yeah. user. And like, well, the phones did hit 60 degrees in some cases. The temperature was only on the CPU and it didn't extend to the battery. Okay. And it never crossed 60. Like that was like an upper limit set probably in the operating system itself. Okay. And this is more a real world scenario. Like you're going to be playing games, it's going to heat up, it's going to slow down a bit and then it'll stabilize at a level. Correct. Oppo, Realme, all these people in benchmarks are just pushing the phone beyond its limit. So Poco, Xiaomi, OnePlus and Nokia, hmm. they are not cheating on the benchmark okay. scores. Okay. Okay, the results that you saw on 3D Mark were similar results or identical on the Twin app. Yes. So talk to us about how unreliable any of the benchmark information that Oppo, Realme, Huawei and Honor are broadcasting or are using for their advertisements and marketing communication. How unreliable are they? You can't trust anything because uh, like take the example of the Honor 10. Now, and even the Oppo F7. So the Oppo F7 was the one that was caught cheating which we done that fake app and did the testing. The actual score of these apps is half of what it should have been. Which means that Oppo's flagship Kirin 970 performs half as well as say Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 in gaming benchmarks. My God. And Honor is selling this phone as a gaming smartphone. Oppo claims that their chipset is more powerful than the mid-range Snapdragon 660 and their score is double of what it should have been. So it's like, how do you believe anything that, is, that they're saying? It's all, yeah, it's all lies. It's all so that they can sell more phones. Yeah. Nothing at all. Nothing else. Okay, well, this is a very, very, uh, this is a very, very complex and a convoluted situation that we are in. Thank you so much, Anirudh, for all these incredible tests and for the great work. I know you've been at this for close to a month because when the initial results came out, all of us were shocked in office. But Anirudh was like, hey, just for good measure, I want to be able to run this test second time, third time, fourth time. I want to do this again and again and again, just so that we are eliminating any chance, any freak possibility of random ad hoc scores whatsoever. Of course, you can check out the entire detailed report, a nice, long, thorough one on tech2.com. Anirudh has authored that and that's up on the site as well. We are not saying these are bad phones. Hey, they are good phones, right? Uh, but when you have a very nice device like the Oppo Find X, which looks unlike any other device in 2018, that amazing mechanical rising camera is beautiful. When you have a device as strong and powerful a camera as the Huawei P20 Pro, those nighttime shots of the P20 Pro are remarkable. It is very unfortunate and almost cheap and extremely unethical for these phone companies to fudge the numbers of these benchmark scores and lie to you. They're absolutely lying to you about all their benchmark scores and like Anirudh rightly pointed out, one really doesn't know what can be trusted when any of these companies are saying anything. Thank you so much for watching this and in case you guys haven't already, please subscribe to Tech2's YouTube channel. We will continue to do a lot more detailed investigative stories like this and um, if you think this is something good, then please share it with all your friends. Thank you, Anurad. Thanks.